G'day there, how's it going? About six weeks ago, I put out episode 45, which was describing my evaluation of three different kinds of extended release oxalic acid strips. They were the jib tape that I've been using for a few years, a new method using cardboard strips and Swedish sponges. In that video, I described a simple test that I've set up here at home with six hives. I've put those three different kinds of strips in those six hives. Two hives per type of strip. Now, six weeks later, I'm going to show you the test results. I carried out an alcohol wash mite test on each of the six hives yesterday. I used a pretty standard method for doing the tests. I collected bees from the brood. I put them into the test shaker and I shook them for two minutes each. I'm not going to show the video that I took of me testing each of those six hives because that would be a really boring video. I'm just showing you enough of how I did the first one so that you can see the method that I used. So on to the results. The first hive I tested was hive 37 and it had Swedish sponges in it. I should mention at this point that uh, I only placed Swedish sponges into those hives that had two brood boxes because that put the sponges in the middle of the brood chamber. For those hives that I had single brood boxes, I put other kinds of strips in them. That's based on the advice from Randy Oliver that the Swedish sponges really are most effective when there are double brood boxes. So I'm going to, for each hive, I'm going to give you two numbers. I'm going to give you the mite count before I put the strips in and then the mite count now about six or seven weeks later. For hive 37 with Swedish sponges, it had a mite count of one mite per 300 bees at the start and a mite count of one mite per 300 bees at the end. So the mite level has not increased. The next hive that I tested was hive 23. It had cardboard strips in it. It started with a mite count of five mites per 300 bees. The test that I did yesterday came up with four mites per 300 bees. So the cardboard strips have reduced the mite load slightly. In hive 27, which has jib tape, it started with three mites per 300 bees. But when I went to test it this time, I discovered that that hive had gone queenless and there was no brood in it. So that queen disappeared sometime over the last six weeks. The mite count that I did yesterday on that hive was zero mites. That tells me that when there's no brood in the hive, the oxalic acid has done a great job of reducing the mite level significantly. Because without brood, there's no population of mites coming into the hive regularly to reinfest it. The next hive that I tested was hive 54. It had Swedish sponges in it. It started the test with a mite count of two mites per 300 bees. Six or seven weeks later, the mite level in that hive has increased to seven mites per 300 bees. Not a particularly satisfactory result from my perspective. The fifth hive that I tested was hive 11. It had cardboard strips in it. It started the test with a very high mite level, 28 mites per 300 bees. At the end of the test, that mite level had come down a little bit to 25 mites per 300 bees. Now that's still too high to go into the winter time with. I will be treating that hive additionally with vaporized oxalic acid to try and bring those levels down even further. And the last hive that I tested was hive 44. It had jib tape in it. It started the test period with zero mites per 300. By the end of the test, that level had increased to six mites per 300. Now, six mites per 300, that's two per 100. That's still an acceptable level, but the fact that the mite levels increased while the strips were in 
is not as good as I had hoped. So, what can we deduce from this? What, what did I deduce from this? You can deduce whatever you want to. Uh, what I deduce from it is that the all three methods are keeping mites levels down, but as I've said in other videos, it's been my experience that the extended release oxalic acid strips are not that good at taking high mite levels and bringing them down. What they're good at is maintaining low levels of mite infestation. So as is usually the case in the autumn, I do mite tests, mite checks on my hives, and for those hives where the mite levels are too high, I do extra treatment. Some years I've actually pulled the oxalic acid strips and put chemical strips in. Other years I've used vaporization. Whatever the case, the goal is to go into the autumn when the bees are making winter bees with the lowest mite levels that you can possibly get. Now I've got a master's degree, I've been involved in research, I understand research methods and a sample size of two is not enough. So this is not a scientific research study, this is just a simple test for me in my backyard. One thing I would say is that from experience, sometimes a sample number of one is enough to make a definitive result. Put your hand on a hot element and discover that it's too hot to touch because you've been burned slightly and you don't need to repeat that experiment 30 more times to have a definitive result. And the same applies in this instance. If the mite numbers have exploded in these hives, that would tell me that these strips are not working. And I wouldn't need to test any more to find that answer. The other thing about research methods is that Normally you would have a control. My control is the fact that I know, without having to, do, to test it, that at this time of year, autumn, here in the southern hemisphere, the number of mites per bee will increase dramatically if you don't treat the hives. That's partly because the bee numbers are going down and the mite numbers are staying constant or increasing. So therefore your mite load when measured in terms of mites per bees increases dramatically. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.